Any information you guys have, let me know. We can talk about it. We can discuss any characters, crimes, anything that's been going on that you have been holding in that you didn't want to expose earlier. We're on the administrative group right now. So you can talk about crimes that any member committed and we are okay. This is a free for all at this point. We're talking about the administrative group. Now, OB is in here and OB is being held. And remember, Don Carter, the reason he arrested OB is because he went to talk to Davis. Didn't get any information. Davis didn't fold. He went to talk to Tariq. He even threatened Tariq about his mother and with sack. Tariq didn't fold. Obi, we arrested Obi. And the reason we arrested Obi, but he's not arrested. Right now, he's just detained, but he is free to go. But Obi isn't, you know what I'm saying, going along in like, hey, let me go ahead and leave. He's just sitting here because he's not American. He don't understand what his rights are. He can actually get up and get the fuck out of here. But he's sitting in here. And Don Carter has a lot of information. Don Carter is applying that pressure. Now, we know the description of Don Carter. We know what Don Carter is representing. We know that Don Carter ain't playing around with nobody. Right? Because they tell us the uh, Detective Don Carter is a rising NYPD officer who was on track to become police commissioner until his wife was unalived in a crossfire between rival gangs. Vowing to make the streets safer, Carter traded in his tie for a Kevlar vest and now leads an elite NYPD task force, drug task force, not a regular task force, not a task force for niggas with parking tickets, not a task force that been speeding, not a task force that... Niggas that have been slapping their bosses. Not a task force for niggas that have been petty thefts. This is a NYPD drug task force, meaning if you have an ounce of cocaina, if you have a pound of marijuana, if you have an ounce of that H, then he is on your ass. Because if we get rid of the small fish and we hold them in the little fish tank, we will eventually get to the big fish, the alligators, the sharks, the whales. Now, the whale is the big time level, and that's where we're trying to work our way up to. But he leads an elite NYPD drug task force that elicits concrete results against drug-related violence. While his achievements are noteworthy of public recognition, nothing can bring back his love loss. Now, when he's in here, he's talking to goddamn Obi. We've already went over what happened to Obi. He's letting them know, listen, I know about your green cards. I know about your connections to Rashad Tate. I also know about your connection to a one Tariq St. Patrick, son of James St. Patrick, biggest piece of shit New York has ever seen since Rudy Giuliani. We know the connections that you have. And in order for you to get these green cars expedited then you have to know somebody in high places so it would only make sense that you know councilman rashad tate who has a shady past linked to Tariq st patrick now of course we know obi's response is Tariq. i don't know who Tariq is it would be good for me to know who a councilman is especially in this moment to give my green cards he said no 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 you can play all the games you want to mr british mr um ob mr I don't have an English accent, but I do know exactly what's going on here. I don't work with any drug organization. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that bullshit sounds nice, but guess what? I am the motherfucking police. P-O-L-I-C-E. L-I-C-E stands for I can lie. And if you don't know, now you know that We keep paperwork around here, Obi. And also, if you didn't know in this case file, if you didn't know in this case file, I got some photos. And these photos are of you and one Tariq St. Patrick right here, right here in this case file. So what you want to do? You want to give me some information? You can give me some information. I got to show you these photos. Obi said, can I make a phone call? Yeah, you can make a phone call. Well, am I, am I under arrest? No, you're not under arrest. I just want you to know that I got photos. I got evidence right here. Right here, I got it. 
Turns out Detective Don Carter is just applying a bullshit bluff. We find out that the paper that he had in that damn folder. It ain't nothing on it. It ain't nothing on it. So when he's applying this pressure, this guy will be thinking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He got pictures. Don is lying about everything. But we've seen Obi and Tariq build an alliance at the end of season three about the green cards. Now, it came out that Tate was the one expediting these green cards. We also know that Tate has a link to Tariq, and all the information that Don Carter has is legitimate. And it's making sense because Obi is starting to realize, like, damn, they do have something. Now, the only issue is, as far as Obi's story, when it gets back to Noma, None of this shit is true. He didn't talk. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. But I'm going to tell you, this is exactly what they tell us in the uh, in the military. Perception is reality. You've been held by the police for 24 hours. And they question you for 24 hours. And now they're releasing you. No one's going to think that you didn't give up any information. They're going to think you got released because you gave up information. And this is why it's bad. But Don Carter doesn't care. And that's why he threw the whole foul away. Even though it was blank paper, is because he wanted him to go ahead and admit. But he knows that he put that pressure on Obi. Where both, uh, where both Obi has to tell some kind of information to give up who he's working for or give up Tariq and Rashad Tate. So Detective Don Carter is better. Right now, in three episodes, Don Carter has done more than any, any administrative character that we had in the first six seasons, the first three seasons, the first three seasons in uh, Raising Canaan, the first two seasons. Don Carter has done more in three episodes than any police officer we've ever seen in the Power Universe. Who is putting more? Can we name a police officer or someone in the administrative group that's put in more work than Don Carter in this in this amount of time? We got people that have been here for seasons. Look, Jenny Sullivan was around prosecuting this for three seasons. She failed so bad. She's going to, after the mob. She's not even fucking with this Tariq case no more. This nigga Don Carter is applying pressure to everybody. No, nah, I wouldn't. I, I man, Cooper Sacks is a legend, first of all. But what he's doing, Cooper Sacks was just a remember, Cooper Sacks was just working with the ADA at first. Then Cooper Sacks became an independent lawyer. So he wasn't really like initially he was trying to get people locked up, but he was doing some dirty shit. But he wasn't like really out here stepping on shit. Remember Cooper Sacks initially. He was working up under, well, not really working up under Angela, but he was working in that office and he was just going to piece shit together. He wasn't really like solving no crimes or nothing. He was just setting shit up to, you know, saying to progress himself in his career. There's no plea. Blanca, we seen Blanca get knocked the fuck out. She ain't figured out shit. Who the fuck are them niggas in Chicago? What, what would they name in Chicago on force? They ain't figured out a goddamn thing over there. Like, we ain't got nobody really putting in no work. Then we got them at the meeting. So we see Kamal Tate. Now, shout out to Kendall. Kendall had sent me something. I think it was episode, season two, episode 10. You remember there was initially Kamal Tate was on the task force. You remember Kamal Tate was the one that got Lauren to wear the Polex, the Folex, the Nolex, the Teltex. You know what I mean? He was the one that set that whole thing up, him and Jenny. Now, remember, he ended up getting fired off of that task force. Now, she was asking me, did he lose his job? When he lost his job, the way I understood it was he got fired from the task force that was going after the Jabari Reynolds murder. Remember, he was on that task force. Him and Jenny got uh, Lauren to wear the wire. And that's how the whole thing got set up with Tariq. 
via Bruce Andre. Remember, well, Bruce Andre is the one that started all this. She sparked all this shit before Lauren got jammed up. So when you start pointing fingers, you need to start making sure that you point fingers to Bruce Andre. The only way Kamal Tate got on this case is because Bushandra put the weed inside of Lauren's drawer. So when they ran the sweep, Lauren's drawer got hit. And Lauren, remember, she said she didn't know what the, whose weed it was or where it came from. But they said, here, just wear a wire and we'll get you up out of here. Kamal Tate got assigned to the case. Kamal Tate's on the case with Jenny Sullivan. and He was following that. But as the case fell apart, he ended up getting fired. But he didn't get fired from the NYPD. He got removed from the task force that was following the whole Jabari in the Stansfield case. You see what I'm saying? And then that's how Rashad Tate was sleeping on his bed, well, on his couch in the um, in the basement. And then he went to Stern, and that's how he ended up getting the job because the whole Jabari and Miss Carrie thing happened. So then in the season three, that's when Rashad Tate got on and got at the school. But Kamal was removed from the task force and he was just put back on NYPD. So when he lost his job, it wasn't that he got fired from the NYPD. It was he got taken off the task force that was watching over the, you know, saying the Jabari and the whole Stansfield case. And then this is where we find out that. Uh, Don Carter, their task force, they have jurisdiction over all of the boroughs, because if you're going to move drugs to anywhere, this is where he gets appointed. Now, I've never heard of anything like this. This would be more of like a federal task force, but I mean, it's a TV show. Fuck it. Unless it's like the uh, the mayor of New York's like, hey, you guys can get jurisdiction over all of it, then this is not going to happen. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, RIP to Miss Carrie, man. I like Miss Carrie, too. I just hated that she was letting Zeke smash. I know I look better than Zeke. Yeah, you know what, I mean? what movie is that from? Man, you let him smash. I know I look better than him. What movie is that from? Now, he's telling Kamal Tate, like, listen, you kind of compromised. We know that you've been fucking up. And Kamal's like, listen, at least let me finish this case off, bro. I already started. I did the wire and everything back in season three, season two. No, season two going into season three. Let me at least finish. Now, they end up getting a call. Well, one of the members on the task force comes in and he's like, hey, listen, we just got a, a call about a van that's on fire with some drugs. So Kamal's like, listen, let me roll with you. We'll continue this conversation. Uncle G said it would. Hell yeah. He's like, man, you let Terry bone. I know I look better than Terry. <laughs> and I'm going to watch the, I'm, that's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go watch the, <laughs> as you know, as we get older in the culture we in now, like I'm going to go watch the wood. Like back in the day, you can say, I'm going to go watch the wood. Now you got to say, I'm going to go watch the wood. Pause. The fuck that. I'm going to go watch the wood when I get off of here. But uh, Kamal's like, hey, let me roll with you, and we'll continue this conversation. So, all right, we're going to do that. Now, they get a call, and they get a call about that van. Now, the van is the van that, uh, what's the name, blew up. Kane and his, you know what I'm saying, his, uh, his goonies. So when they show up, they look like, oh, this is retaliation. This is easy, man. You can smell the coke in the air. Kamal's like, yeah, this is revenge. This is payback. This was a, you know what I'm saying, this is a coordinated hit. Everyone's like, so are you sure about that? He's like, look, I've been on the job for a while. Run the plates. Now, when they run the plates, we find out that it goes back uh, to Roman. Now, this is some of the dumbest shit that Brillo was even talking about, too. The van was registered to Roman. Roman works for Zion. Zion is out the way, and all of this happened because of Tariq putting this shit in play. But we're talking about from the administrative group, so they don't know that any of this happened. But what they can do is now the same thing that they just did to Obi, Roman, they're going to apply that pressure. So when we see Don Carter arrest him, episode four, we should see a little bit of interrogation of Roman and him giving up some information. Now, he might not say much. He might mention Tariq's name. He might give up the Fight Club. He might give up Zion. Which one of the things are you going to uh, are you gonna bet your money on? Is he saying that, there, hey, there was a new guy around? I'm not sure who he is. It was a young kid and a white kid. Or is he going to give up, I work for Zion? Or is it going to be the Fight Club? Which one do you think uh, Roman is more likely to do? 
say that there was a you know what I'm saying a black kid and a white kid that came in there they're new around there maybe they had something to do with it he gonna talk about the fight club or is he gonna give up zion i mean that's all we can go off right now and that's the administrative group man don carter ain't playing around he's making arrests almost every episode or he's questioning niggas and he's like look i know there's a lot of bs going on but one of y'all gonna have some answers one of y'all gonna figure out uh what the fuck is going on? And y'all gonna tell me that shit right here, right now, or you're not getting released. But that's the administrative group. Let me know what you guys, you know, say what you guys think. We have five hours and 45 minutes. Hey, man, we did it, man. We did it. We made it through. You know what I mean? We made it through. It's been a it's been a it's been a journey. I ain't gonna lie to you. Eyes are getting heavy, it's early as hell. But I love it, man. Power Book 2, Episode 